Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Meredith Wilson on the Hallmark Playhouse in his own story, And There I Stood With My Piccolo. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present as our star an author, and our story is taken from his book. Now, his name is Meredith Wilson, better known, perhaps, as a composer, songwriter, arranger, instrumentalist, conductor, actor, lyricist, raconteur, man about town. And he has also, I understand, invented talking people. Talking people. However... In his spare time, Meredith Wilson has managed to write a book, a book that I myself found curiously fascinating. Contrary to what you might expect, it doesn't deal wholly with music, but it's really the story of Meredith Wilson himself. And in writing it, he has given us a fragment of the great story of America, a story in which sincerity, ambition, and merit can triumph over every obstacle. Now, this book is called, And There I Stood With My Piccolo. Meredith, there must be a reason for that. Well, Jimmy, an old Moravian flute player once told me a story that went like this. A very important king hired a whole orchestra to play for him one night during his supper just because he felt lonesome. This orchestra played great, and the king was so delighted that before going to bed, he said, Now, boys, your playing gave me the whips and jingles. And just for that, you can all go into my counting house and fill your instruments with gold pieces. And there I stood with my piccolo. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And before we begin our story, Frank Goss, I know you have something interesting to say about Hallmark. There are Hallmark cards for every memorable occasion on your calendar. For birthdays, anniversaries, holidays. Yes, for every occasion that calls for remembrance, for a friendly greeting, a word of good cheer, an expression of sympathy. There is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back, that says you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting Meredith Wilson's And There I Stood With My Piccolo, starring Meredith Wilson. Sounds stay in your memory longer than anything else, seems to me. The older I get, the clearer I can hear the sounds that were the dimensions of the world during my early days back in Mason City, Iowa. Sounds like Mama scraping the toast that always burned, Papa's derby hitting the newel post in the front hall, almost a dead heat with the six o'clock whistle. The smooth roller skate sound in front of Glanville's house where it was new cement. And the rough roller skate sound in front of our house where the cement was old. The Sunday sounds began with Mama playing the church in the Wildwood on the black upright piano in the parlor. But the sound I remember best was the first sound of the flute my cousin Walter, who was the postman on our street, brought me from the mail order house in Chicago. Pucker up your lips, son, and try it again. But, Papa, I don't want to play this flute. I want to play a piccolo. A piccolo is just a small flute, and you must learn the flute first. Now, pucker up. <laughs> Give me the flute. I'll show you how. Hold on. Since when are you a flute teacher? Mama, one side, please. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, who's going to teach you? Maybe you, Mama. Give me that flute. No. When I make up my mind to do something, I do it. Papa! Be still, Meredith. I'll blow this that ratted skinny sidewinder if it's the last thing I ever do. Papa! 
Yes, Meredith. Papa, you forgot to pucker. <laughs> A couple years later, when I began my freshman year in Mason City High School, I started playing first flute in the school band. I was dreaming almost out loud at the first rehearsal. Meredith Wilson, first flute for John Philip Sousa, Sousa's band. And then Marion McGuire from behind her big tuba nudged me and I came back to earth. excitement of playing with the band. It's almost too much to bear. Aren't you trembling? Aren't you gawk? Oh, no, Marion. You see, I'm practically a professional. I'm going to play with Sousa's band. Really? Mm -hmm. Sousa? Why, you're practically a genius. A uh, child prodigy. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I'm past 14, you know. That's true. <laughs> Meredith, you have music in your soul. And you're so wise for your years, musically. Why is it that I'm always a beat behind the orchestra? It seems I never catch up with the rest of the instrument. Well, I'd suggest that uh, when Mr. Gorman says begin, just start one note before he says begin. But how will I know when he's going to say begin? Uh, well... Boys and girls, ready? Begin. I was a gangling 18 when I began to feel that my britches were getting too big for Mason City. So, I decided to expand. New York was just about the right size, and as quick as you could dot an I, or maybe just a mite slower, cross a T, I was at the railroad depot waiting for the train to New York. Of course, Mom and Papa were there, but I didn't expect the whole band. <laughs> I like the idea of your going out on your own. Don't say that, Papa. I don't. I'll miss you, boy. Oh, Mama, don't worry. I'll write to you every day. Meredith, I want to tell you a little something about America. And that includes New York. It's a land of challenges and a country of pioneers. Whether you be a musician or a homesteader. What I'm trying to say is... Folks warm-heartedly applaud any man who breaks new ground or attains new heights, whether he be a Rockefeller or just a boy like yourself. But you've got to work hard for it. It's there to be had. You know, son, you sort of got to be a pioneer. Thanks, Papa. I'll remember. Boy, here's a shoebox full of chicken for you to take along in the trip. Now, take good care of yourself. A shoebox full of chicken? Oh, Mama, there's a lot of big city people on the train, and, well, how would it look? Don't think I'm a hayseed. I don't know about that, son. Maybe it'll look like you came from Mason City, Iowa. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> After two weeks in New York, I finally found my way to the Musicians' Union over on 86th Street, where I hung around waiting for a job that didn't seem to come. My funds were on the shrinking side, and I was a very frightened boy. I couldn't find any Iowans any place. John Fabrizio, telephone Ernie Wagner. Wait, you! You play the pick? The pick? 
Oh, oh, you mean the piccolo. Yes, sir, and I play the flute, too. Ah, that's very good. Maybe you'll be my substitute tonight at the Winter Guard if I can't find nobody else. You wait to hear, maybe I'll come back. Substitute at the Winter Oh, substitute at the Winter Garden, Al Jolson's theater. What's the excitement, Wasp Waste? Wasp Waste? Oh, because I'm skinny, huh? Well, uh, excuse me, but I have to make a telephone call to my family in Mason City. I may be a substitute at the Winter Garden. Save your money, fella. You'll only be embarrassed later. The Winter Garden you're talking about is over a delicatessen on the east side. Oh. They imagine me being silly enough to believe that I could play for Al Jolson. What instrument do you play? Flute. I double a piccolo. Why, uh, you're a musician too, aren't you? I'm a violinist. You never heard of me, but someday you will. You'll hear about Sammy Gardner. Uh, <clears throat> my name's Meredith. Meredith Wilson. Wasp voice fits you better. You've been working much? I, I don't have time to accept many jobs. You see, I'm composing a violin concerto. I'm going to play it, too. Guest artist with the New York Philharmonic Orchestra in Carnegie Hall. Gee, that's wonderful. I'd like to be there if you'll tell me the date. I'll get a ticket. You're laughing at me, aren't you? You're like everybody else. No, no, I meant what I said. I wish I could believe you. You see, I, I know I'm not a Heifetz or a Brahms, but I'm going to keep on studying. Scales, chords, harmony, theory, counterpoint, until, until someday I'll get my chance to play with a Philharmonic. And I'll bet on you, Sammy. I'll bet my last nickel. You're what my father calls a pioneer. Thanks. How could I arrange to make you head of the Philharmonic? Uh, tell me, what are your plans? What do you want to do? Well, I've composed little things ever since I was a kid, and I'd like to conduct. But right now, more than anything else, I'd like a job playing flute with a man that I've dreamed about all my life. Oh, well, who's that? Oh, I'm a little embarrassed to tell you, but you see, out in Iowa, we think he's great. John Philip Sousa. Only in Iowa you think he's great? My friend better multiply Iowa by the whole world. Sousa is great. Well, you. Uh, yes, Mr. Enrico. Uh, it's uh, too bad, my chem miseria. No luck. I no find anyone to play the flute but you. Mr. Enrico, thanks. And don't forget the piccolo, see, because... Oh, hello, Sammy. Hi, Enrico. What's the matter with you, Sammy? You get skinnier every time I see you. When you eat the last, huh? Come on, I buy you dinner. So long, Wasp Waste. Say hello to Sousa for me, will you? Sousa? Okay, he's my substitute. Mr. Enrico, uh, would you advance me a nickel? I want to make a bet on a man. <laughs> About six months later, the world was my apple. Just imagine how I felt the morning I went down to Brooks Brothers to get measured for my Sousa uniform. I trooped for three seasons for Mr. Sousa from New York to San Francisco and from Ottawa to Havana. And every time I walked down to the footlights to play that famous piccolo part in the Stars and Stripes Forever, I got the thrill of a lifetime. Tomorrow's kids won't ever have the chance to hear Sousa's band, but all good things must come to an end. Come in, Mr. Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Souza. What can I do for you? Well, uh, Mr. Souza, <clears throat> I know I owe you a great deal of loyalty, sir, and gratitude. Now, if it's a raise you're looking for, you're using the wrong approach. Be brave. Come up to me and say, Mr. Souza, I've worked hard for you. You can't get along without my flute and piccolo. Either you give me a raise or I quit. <laughs> and then I fire you. <laughs> well, I don't want a raise, Mr. Souza. You've always been more than fair with me. It's just that, well... I want to compose, and I want to conduct. I have an opportunity to go to Seattle where I'll get the chance. I've never stood in the way of a friend, especially when he felt he could better himself. Good luck, young fellow. And remember, there'll always be a job here if you ever care to return. You've been my ideal for a long, long time, and I guess you always will be. Thanks, Mr. Souza. Thanks for everything. Uh, Mr. Wilson, a little suggestion? Keep your instruments handy. You know, just in case. Oh, no, sir. I'm changing my flute and piccolo for a baton. I can't honestly say that I took Seattle by storm, but I can say Seattle took me by storm. I was set to conduct a series of symphonies in an outdoor bowl. Well, the weatherman double-crossed me, and I laid a very large egg in the shadow of Mount Rainier. 
I returned to New York, kind of short in the pocket, unwrapped my flute and my piccolo, and accepted a job playing as a sospitute in the band in Central Park. The weather was beautiful, and I decided to walk to the concert. Well, Mr. Wilson, how's the young American conductor? Mr. Sousa, well, uh, just fine, Mr. Sousa. And how was your debut in Seattle? Uh, you see, it was, it was wonderful. You know, they have the most wonderful apples there. And the, the campus of the college, you just can't beat it. What are you doing in New York? Well, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, Mr. Sousa, I'm uh, giving, a uh, giving a concert there in Central Park. I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm in such a hurry. I'm on my way there now. Well, good luck to you, Mr. Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, John Philip Sousa's unforgettable Stars and Stripes Forever. I walked down to the footlights to play that famous piccolo solo. I looked out into the audience, and there in the front row was the great Mr. Sousa. His eyes caught mine. He smiled gently. And there I stood with my piccolo... In a moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of And There I Stood With My Piccolo, starring Meredith Wilson. In Fleet Prison, London, more than three centuries ago, a man spent long hours in his cell writing letters that he never intended to mail. But the letters were destined to be read by the whole world, for the prisoner was James Howell, the renowned English scholar, and these letters have become a part of our literary heritage. Across the centuries comes this thought of his... Words are the soul's ambassadors. How true that is. Words are ambassadors. Your means of communicating to others the things you feel in your heart. And a great many people must share this belief because they choose Hallmark cards to represent them to their friends. There is a Hallmark card that always will truly express your own feelings. Whether you want to send a message of sympathy, congratulations on an anniversary, or a friendly holiday greeting there is a Hallmark card that says just what you want to say, the way you want to say it. And when you select your card, look for the Hallmark on the back. That tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. And now we present Act Two of Meredith Wilson's And There I Stood With My Piccolo, starring Meredith Wilson. productive years passed, and I guess I had written about a hundred songs that were turned down by every publisher in New York. Then finally, I hit the lucky trail. No, I didn't sell a song, but I did get a job with that obstinate, stubborn, spoiled, conceited, pampered, superb instrument known as the Philharmonic Symphony Society of New York. A job as second flute, and being conducted by the greatest of them all, the maestro. Arturo Toscanini. And that wasn't all the luck I had. I met a fella called Abe Meyer who was about my own age, and what a friend. I was practicing my flute one day when Abe made his usual quiet entrance. Meredith, Meredith, go away. That's the way I played Bach for him. Bravo. Shh, shh, shh. That's the way I played Mendelssohn for him. Gimbals, Macy's, who cares? I got something important to tell you. Important? Who cares? And that's Meredith Wilson. Meredith, go back to Bach. Look, look, you've just sold a song. Song? Who cares? Song? Song. You sold a song? My song? Hallelujah! Oh, Abe, hey, bless you. I'm a published composer. Let's go out and buy all the copies. Let's give them a chance to print it first, huh? Oh, uh, something else. I, uh, I got an appointment for you with Toscanini. Abe! Huh? He 
We're going to deliver your symphony to him in an hour. To Toscanini? Hey, you're out of your mind. Which symphony do you mean? How many symphonies have you written? Just one. That's the one. <laughs> I'm not going. Look, who are you to give Toscanini a stand-up? He wouldn't do that to you. Barrett, if you're gone, if I have to carry you. <laughs> Meredith, how was Toscanini? He was wonderful to me. Oh, great, great. When's he going to conduct your symphony? Never, I'm afraid. He turned it down? Well, I'm going to find out the reason. No, he didn't turn it down, Abe. I never showed it to him. You didn't show it to him, but why not? It was a chance of a lifetime. I just couldn't do it, Abe. Meredith, come on. This time I'll go with you. Hand me that manuscript. Please, Abe, not now. Someday, maybe someday I won't be afraid to show it to him. Uh, Mr. Halsey, I'm Meredith Wilson. You uh, <laughs> published a song of mine, you know. Yeah. How could I forget you? Well, here I am. I was passing by, and I thought I'd drop in, say hello, and pick up my royalty check at the same time. I hope you brought a basket with you. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it so happens I have a statement in your check on my desk. I'll bet you sold plenty of copies. I know that in Mason City, Iowa, that's my hometown, at least 75 copies were sold. Rah, rah for Mason City. Here's a rundown. Sales recorded for the last six months in the United States, England, Europe, South America, and points north, east, south, and west. Gosh, I must be rich. You certainly are. Here's your check for a dollar and 66 cents. <laughs> ah, boy, you killed him in Mason City. You, are you sure that you didn't make a mistake? I'll say I did. Your song sold 88 copies. And I neglected to mention that includes Cuba, Mexico, Labrador, and Hawaii. Now, take your check and get out, and if I ever get my hands on Abe Meyer... But didn't you even like the waltz? I didn't like the waltz or the eight other tunes. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilson, I'm busy. But I can rewrite the second movement of my symphony. Young man, I don't care what you do with it as long as you don't bring it back here. But, sir, you promised that this year I could be the first flute. Wilson, if you don't pay more attention, you'll be lucky if you have a contract next year to play second flute. Well, I guess I was a total bust. My songs were a flop. My symphony, uh, nobody wanted to play it. As for my flute playing, I was on probation. I started to go into rehearsal that day at the Philharmonic with my mind made up to resign after this performance. Maybe I wasn't cut out to be a musician. There were plenty of other things a fella could do. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I should like to present our guest artist for this week, Mr. Samuel Gardner. Thank you, Jeff. The rehearsal will commence in three minutes. Sammy! Sammy! Hello, Wasp. Waste. It's been a long time, over five years. Sammy, you did it. You did what you said you'd do. Listen, how could I miss when a guy bet his last nickel on me? Yasha Heifetz was playing better fiddle than anybody in the world before he was old enough to blow his own nose. You couldn't have held back that flood of genius any more than you could have plugged up the cloudburst of melody that poured out of Brahms. Those two gents were gods, all right. There's no question about it. Sammy Gardner, on the other hand, was not from Olympus at all. He was not even from Olympus Junction. But he rose to heights that night because he was determined enough. He lived for one goal. And when Sammy Gardner, human being, walked out onto the stage of Carnegie Hall, the only strings to that show were on his fiddle. Nobody helped him to that triumph but himself. And to me that night, Sammy was greater than Heifetz and Brahms put together. 
And if Sammy Gardner could do it, then there was no reason why Meredith Wilson, human being, Mason City, Iowa, couldn't do it too. I was going to compose. I was going to conduct. I was going west to Hollywood. There was something called talking pictures out there, and radio was booming. Maybe they could use a fellow like me. Like Papa once said, you've got to be a pioneer. In just a moment, James Hilton and Meredith Wilson will return. Right now, I have a reminder, as if you needed any, that next Thursday is the day for the wearing of the green, St. Patrick's Day. Now there's a day for laughter and wit and shamrocks and a bright green ribbon in your buttonhole. And you know, it doesn't make much difference whether you or your friends are Irish. They'll like hearing from you on this friendliest of days, and you can wish them good luck in the best old Irish tradition. Hallmark cards make that mighty easy to do because there's a St. Patrick's Day card for everyone, for the Rileys, O'Briens, O'Malley's, and Ryans, and all of your friends from Erin. There are humorous cards written to bring a new twinkle to laughing Irish eyes. For someone especially dear, you'll find a sentiment as lovely as the lakes of Killarney. And for a friend who may be just green with the envy of the Irish, there's a card to make him glad he can share in the festivities of the day. So don't forget, next Thursday... First thing tomorrow, plan to see the special St. Patrick's Day cards at the friendly store where you buy your Hallmark cards. Here again is James Hilton. Meredith, this was an unusual occasion in the playhouse. You were the author of the story we dramatized, the central character, the actor, and uh, tell me, why didn't you conduct the orchestra too? Well, I like to listen to Lynn Murray's music. The truth is, Jimmy, I hit his baton. <laughs> I was a little afraid he might try it. But seriously, Meredith is one of the most talented musicians I've ever known. And as you've been able to see tonight, his talent doesn't stop there. Well, now, Lynn, that sounds pretty impressive. Truth is, I've been doing what I like to do. Trying to do it well, sure, but I got the chance to do it because people were nice. They helped, gave me a pat on the back and said, Go ahead, kid. We're behind you. They were thoughtful and kind and sympathetic. They practiced all the things those fine Hallmark cards of yours encourage. Understanding, thoughtfulness, friendliness. Pretty easy to make people happy by just remembering to say something nice to them once in a while. Well, I've certainly had fun reliving my life here tonight, and thanks for listening. And thank you, Meredith Wilson, for a delightful evening. Now, I'd like to tell you what's going on here next Thursday, when our star will be Barry Fitzgerald in an Irish-American story appropriate to the Feast of St. Patrick, Edward McSorley's Our Own Kind. And in following weeks, we will bring you such stars as Richard Conte and Margaret O'Brien, and stories by such outstanding authors as Irving Stone and Betty Smith. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday, our director-producer is D. Engelbach, and our music is arranged and conducted by Lynn Murray, and our story tonight was adapted by Jack Rubin. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying... Good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all and inviting you next Thursday and every Thursday to tune in one half hour earlier and listen to The Adventures of Casey, crime photographer, followed by the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.